Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. The notion that the United States and the Western world in general created ISIS, or Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, is a controversial and complex topic. There are various arguments and perspectives on this issue. To provide a comprehensive understanding, I think we should break down some of the key points surrounding this claim. ISIS emerged in the early 2010s, primarily as a result of the power vacuum created by the US-led invasion of Iraq in 2003. The toppling of Saddam Hussein's regime and the subsequent debarfification of Iraq led to political instability and sectarian tensions within the country. The precursor to ISIS was Al-Qaeda in Iraq, led by Abu Masab al-Zakari. Al-Zakari had already been active in Iraq during the US occupation and was responsible for numerous attacks against US and Iraqi forces as well as civilians in Iraq. Critics argue that US policies and actions indirectly contributed to the rise of ISIS. They point to the disbanding of the Iraqi military and the debarfification process, which left many Sunni Arabs unemployed and marginalized, creating fertile ground for extremist recruitment. Additionally, the US withdrawal from Iraq in 2011 left a security void that some would argue was exploited by ISIS. Also, the Syrian civil war, which began in 2011, provided another fertile ground for the growth of ISIS. The group took advantage of the chaos in Syria and expanded its territorial control. Not only this, but many Western-backed rebel groups who were battling against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's regime were exposed as having members with links to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. One such example of this would be the heart-eating cannibal Abu Sakar, who originally was a self-proclaimed rebel fighter, though he would eventually be exposed as being a member of the jihadist group Al-Qaeda. The funding of rebel groups in Syria by the West ultimately strengthened various jihadist groups across the region, including ISIS. ISIS also attracted foreign fighters from various countries, including some Western nations. Some argue that insufficient security, especially in Europe, allowed these individuals to travel to the region and join ISIS, strengthening the group. ISIS also generated revenue through various means, including oil smuggling, extortion, and looting. Many say that the US did not intentionally create ISIS, though its actions in the aftermath of the Iraq war and its handling of the security situation in the region indirectly contributed to the group's rise. The situation is complex and involves multiple factors, including regional dynamics and the actions of various actors in the Middle East. The claim that the US created ISIS is often claimed to be a simplified and contentious characterization of a more nuanced and multifaceted issue. Though a brief look at recent Western foreign policy will naturally make you doubt these claims. Potentially, something more nefarious was afoot. Ultimately, the powers that be always need a boogeyman. Until, of course, people start seeing through each raid, and then it's on to the next one. Though the majority of the public will fall for the same boogeyman psyop time and time again, in turn, giving away their rights under the guise of safety. Though once said threat is neutralized or stable, very rarely do we reacquire those rights in which we were all too willing to give away. If you give them an inch, they will take a mile. Don't automatically support the current thing. Take a step back and actually listen to contrasting views and draw up your own conclusions. 
In a world where so many Zoomers and Millennials claim to be spiritual, I find it somewhat ironic that they will automatically believe and adopt everything that TV man says as their own worldviews. Unable to decipher deception, black magic, and they will instead fall straight into mass formation psychosis, adopting and participating in a system that has been failing the average working man for generations. There are millions of us, and a handful of them, yet here we are. You can't tell me magic isn't real. But nevertheless. Enough of my diatribes and somewhat psychotic musings. Let's get into the topic of today's video, and let's delve into a pit of depravity, brutality, and complete and utter savagery. Number 1. Isis Murder Tutorial In regards to Isis execution videos, the terror group have become well known for their creative methods of murdering captives on film. From your standard beheadings, to executions using guns, explosives, vehicles, fire, and even by drowning. Much like drug cartels, the purpose of such videos is to shock and spread fear. This video serves as both terror propaganda and also as a training resource for new ISIS recruits. A subscriber sent me the video a couple of weeks ago as I record, and he suggested that it is a new clip. I tried to confirm this claim. The video in which I was linked was only uploaded in August of 2023, and I haven't found the clip online uploaded before August of 2023. Though, it may just be a rare clip that has recently resurfaced, and it is possible that it is older than I think. It's actually surprisingly hard to backdate many of these ISIS videos. The video itself is 2 minutes and 15 seconds in length. For context, the victim is alleged to have been an agent of the Crusaders, so essentially they are accusing him of being a spy. As you play the video, you see the captive, who is wearing a white shirt, and he is tied up against the rubble of a destroyed building in a crucifix-type position. His mouth has also been gagged. Next to him is an ISIS fighter, dressed in combat fatigue, and his face is also covered. At this point in the video, the ISIS fighter is not armed. Instead, he carries out a demonstration, informing recruits of the most important places on the body to stab or slice. He first points out the throat as he pushes the victim's head back. He says, first, the throat. That is by slicing or stabbing like this, and then slicing again. He then motions the notion of stabbing and slicing with his hand, showing how to do it. He then moves on and places his hand on the victim's chest. Second, the chest, he exclaims. It is often targeted, yet it is hard to reach. People try to stab the heart like this. He then performs a stabbing motion with a closed hand, hitting the victim's chest hard. The ISIS fighter then states, this is not actually a preferred place. What is preferred are soft areas, easy to stab and cut. He then taps the victim's stomach, and then once again performs the stabbing motion with a closed hand. He then states, lastly, the lower body. The fire arteries can be stabbed and cut, and then left to bleed out. Once again, he carries out the stabbing motion without a knife, instructing where to cut. The video then jump cuts, and the ISIS fighter then starts to cut the victim's left sleeve of his shirt. As he's cutting the clothing with the knife, he states, now we will look at some other lethal points on the body. After he has cut the victim's sleeve off, exposing his arm, he then uses his knife as a pointer, and he highlights the vulnerable points and kill areas on the arm. He states, on the arm, the artery can be cut in three places. The wrist, the inner elbow, 
and the armpit. He points out the areas with his knife. This is where the video takes a turn for the worst, and the instructor's demonstrations then become physical demonstrations. At this point in the video, a seemingly younger ISIS member then enters shot. The instructor then hands him a knife and points to the victim's wrist and says, cut here. The knife-wielding ISIS member then cuts the victim's wrist. You actually hear the blade as it slices through the flesh, but the victim doesn't make a sound through his gag. He then drops the knife, and the instructor hands him yet another blade. This time, the instructor states, then we stab the throat. The trainee killer then stabs the victim in the neck, and attempts to wriggle the blade around to sever the carterid artery, though it seems that he missed. He then stabs again, this time hitting the artery, and when the knife is pulled back out, a rapid flow of blood stems from the victim's wound, staining his white shirt. The killer waits for the next instruction. He hands the blade back to the instructor, and then the instructor hands him a bigger, longer knife. The instructor then states, We finish by cutting the stomach from top to bottom. As you please. The trainee killer then drives the blade into the top of the victim's abdominal area, and then slices down as instructed. The victim's body contorts as the executioner is slicing open his stomach. Music then starts to play, and the instructor then slices the victim's throat. You are then shown close-ups of the victim's body. After his throat was slashed, it appears that his Adam's apple is exposed. The camera shot then drifts down the victim's lifeless body, and you see his guts and intestines bulge out of his stomach. The instructor then states the following as he stands in front of the victim's body. You now have a complete explanation on places to strike on the body. Now, you must act. The Kufar fight us and you for our religion, so kill them. Although there are various graphic icing training videos online, I haven't seen one this graphic, or one filmed with this type of structure, from the demonstrations to then carrying them out in practice. It's certainly an unsettling video. Number 2. Crush Your Enemies one of the most notable ISIS videos goes by the title of Crush Your Enemies, and this video has been requested to be covered by many subscribers. It was released in and around May of 2016. Since its release, the clip has subsequently been edited down and has been shortened. The original clip actually contains the execution of three men, and is 2 minutes and 45 seconds in length. The gruesome murders were said to have taken place in Yemen. The exact reason for their executions is unknown. As you would expect, the video is very well edited, and as you play it, it shows an introduction graphic, before showing several armed ISIS fighters carrying AKs and standing in formation. It then shows the ISIS members escorting the three Yemeni captives through the desert to the execution location. The captives are wearing blue jumpsuits, and they have their hands tied behind their backs. The men actually bear a striking resemblance to each other, so potentially, they may be related. An ISIS member then reads out a brief statement before the first captive is executed. One of the terrorists takes a knife and slices under the captive's throat. You get an extreme close-up in HD of the beheading, and you see the blade cut through cartilage and the throat. The carterid artery is severed, and it shoots blood several inches into the air. The video then jump cuts as the killer places the head on the victim's torso. The lifeless look on the decapitated head is pure nightmare fuel. The video then jump cuts again, this time showing the second victim 
strapped into a chair with tape. The camera fixates on him before his execution, and he can be seen pleading with his captives to let him live. However, to no avail. One of the ISIS killers then shoots him several times with the AK. You see the bullets hit him as he falls onto the ground. Once again, another jump cut, and you are then given a close-up view of his body, and you see a bullet exit wound on his head. It's blown out a huge hole, which has essentially made his head hollow. The camera then pans away from the body, and you then see the victim's brain on the ground, several feet away from the corpse. The video jump cuts once again, and it then shows the last victim laying on the ground, resting his head against a rock. This last execution is where the video gets its name from, and without doubt, is the most gruesome. The camera fixates on the victim's face as he anticipates what is about to happen to him. He is sweating profusely, with a look of dejection and fear on his face. Two ISIS fighters behind him can be seen picking up a large rock. It's extremely heavy, and one man can't lift it. They then drop the rock on his head, and you hear the audible crack, and you see an indent in the side of the victim's head. It's clear he immediately suffered traumatic brain injury. His eyes cross, and he goes somewhat stiff. Blood then begins to leak from every orifice, his mouth, nose, and ears. After just a few seconds, his whole head is covered in blood. There is honestly so much. As he tries to breathe, when he exhales, huge fountains of blood, bubbly blood, come out of his mouth. Despite the music playing over the video, you still hear the victim's gargles as he chokes on his own blood. He tries to lift his head up momentarily, but he doesn't have the strength to do so. The camera continues to fixate on him, as he death rattles and bleeds profusely. That is where the video ends. Quite frankly, this is one of the worst ISIS clips I've seen. The video is incredibly bloody and gruesome, and certainly not for the faint of heart. The level of cruelty is extreme, even for ISIS standards. Number 3. Explosive Collars This particular video is one in which I've been aware of for quite some time, and it signifies ISIS's calling card of finding new ways to kill, purely for shock value. That is exactly what this gruesome clip showcases. In regards to when it was released, I've not been able to track it back to any specific date, nor have I been able to ascertain where it took place, or who the victims were, or what they were alleged to have done. The version of the clip I found is a shorter one, at 1 minute and 13 seconds in length, though it is very likely that it was clipped from a much longer video. Most ISIS clips are actually rather long, well-edited videos which tells the specific story in which they want to tell. The gore or execution segment is usually the crescendo of said videos, or even just a small segment of the videos. Nevertheless, the video in question is akin to that of a Saw movie. If you have seen the well-known horror franchise, the gruesome scene reminds me of the shotgun shell collar, one of Saw's most well-known traps. As you play the video, you see seven captives with their hands tied behind their backs, being marched through the desert to the execution location. All of the men are then forced to kneel down, and an ISIS fighter then wraps a long blue cord around each of the men's necks. It's a continuous cord, so it essentially ties the men together. It looks like a regular piece of rope or cable, however, it's actually an explosive rope, possibly some kind of plastic explosive. After the ISIS member ties the rope around their necks, the camera then focuses on the captives for a short while. All have a look of dejection on their faces, however, 
they appear to accept their impending doom. At around 28 seconds into the video, you hear a click, and then milliseconds later, the explosive rope blows up, and decapitates many of the captives. The explosion is replayed at different angles, and you see heads fly in the air. The video then jump cuts, and you get close-up shots of the mangled bodies. Some have been decapitated, whereas others have just had their heads destroyed. In one such instance, the camera focuses on a decapitated head. The jaw has been broken, and the face is left with an expression of shock or surprise. The video ends after showing the aftermath and the carnage. The video was shot in an extremely theatric manner, once again highlighting Isis's creativity in dealing out death. Unlike many other Isis videos, the victims died instantly due to the power of the explosives. Regardless, the nature of the video is still extremely messed up. The poor victims' deaths were shot in such a way to try to remove them of their humanity, treating them as crash test dummies more so than sentient human beings. The tactic of dehumanization is very popular among terror groups, as well as in war in general. Ultimately, if you see the opposing side as less than human, this only increases your potential to carry out sheer brutality, cruelty, and savagery. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. More than likely, this will be my last ISIS video. Maybe one more, um, we shall see. I feel at this point in time like I've covered ISIS as much as I should, uh, to be honest. Um, so more than likely, this will be the last one. There's only maybe one more case I may cover as maybe a bonus video. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, thank you guys for, I guess, recommending some of these cases. If anyone else out there has any case ideas or, or topic recommendations, please let me know. Follow me on Twitter, drop me a DM, all that good stuff. You can reach me there. Uh, the link will be in the pinned comments. Also, if you could follow me on Twitch, once again, the link is in the pinned comments. Over on Twitch, it's a bit of a free-for-all. Uh, we have a bit of fun, we have a laugh. We don't talk about uh, such topics on Twitch, we just have fun. So yeah, if you're interested in that, drop me a follow. And yeah, I'll be very appreciative. But anyway, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.